Ooh, what's up guys, and welcome to another Pokemon Wi-Fi battle with your show, of course, the Scarander. And this is actually our first T-View match in, obviously, the T-View. And um, my analysis of this team will be linked down below. I do encourage you guys to check this out because I predicted a very, very different team than I got. Now, I did not see him either bringing Malolic Heatran or Conkledur, so I was a bit scared. Well, I, because I... Did, like I have the team for it, I just didn't think he would bring them because of, uh, well, let's just face it, they're not really that good against my team. Well, here we are, and obviously I did not bring the Pokemon that could deal with them properly, and that is obviously going to be annoying. And my team is as follows, Denji, Lando, Empoleon, Shaman, Drapion, and Elegasam, and he's using Conkler, Lodios, Mega Sharpie, I was going to say, but no, Rayleigh Sharpedo, Tangrowth, Melodic, and Heatran. He has Mega Lodios, while I myself have Mega Tienchi. And uh, from the get go, I kind of realized that he needs to have at least one Scarfer, and Heatran seems to be just that. That would, would be the only reason he would bring that, considering that Heatran is probably the only thing that can tend through my team. So I was really so obsessed with that idea that I couldn't, uh, I couldn't think of it in any other way he would play this game. And my safest leave here was Tienchi, get a Mega Evolution off and basically go for Protect and uh, take it from there. I was a bit unsure how he would play this game, but I needed to force him out and be bring the hurting basically. So with all these my guys, let's go. So from the get go here, I'm just gonna start with Tienchi. Like I said, it was pretty much my safest play and I get my fully Mega Evolution off straight off the bat. Now he's gonna start off with his Vulcan the Heatron and that's completely fine, I was kind of expecting that, and like I said before, Dainji might have been an obvious lead, and uh, with that in mind, I was thinking that he would probably lock himself into, uh, obviously, Flash Cannon. Like I said, I was so obsessed with the idea that he was Scarfed, so I'm gonna switch out, obviously, I'm not really want to take that hit, and I don't, I know I won't outspeed him, so I'm gonna bring Lando, and basically here, I was gonna try to take a Flash Cannon, then... Uh, Retaliate back. I knew I can leave at least or at least take one of these But uh, nah, I cannot I, I cannot take two of those and even worse is I'm faking my own scarf um, The thing is here. He is not scarfed. He actually his hidden power eyes suck very Which means that I lose probably my only check for his uh, cockleder and That's big. That's really big and generally frustrating so I'm going to bring Hannah Lift here, basically I'm going to go for actually breaking that Sugar Berry. I knew I could leave Fire Blast due to my investment, but I also know that I'm going to put myself in a very bad position. Now, luckily for me, he just missed the Fire Blast, and predicting that he will definitely switch out, I decided to go for a Toxic. Now, that might have been a bad play, actually I went for Earth Power, of course I did. I went for Toxic Forward third. I did not do predict, why did I not do that? Anyway, he's going to get his Mega Evolution up. Obviously, this guy is trouble for me. Uh, Alakazam and Jemai, the energy can outspeed it, but he's gonna show me Calm Mind. Um, that's uh, really bad. Like, that is something I can't really work around with, and I knew that once I saw it starting with setting up. Uh, while Toxic will help me, it still doesn't really hurt him, and uh, I felt really, really stressed out here because. He's gonna get a major, major opportunity to basically set up. I did not foresee a call mindset, I just, I didn't. So anyway, I'm gonna bring Panzer here because I was thinking that I could at least force him out with Grapion, uh, or at least not maybe force him out, but I can force him to go for Dragon Pulse. And if so, I can actually bring Dianchi, and Dianchi should be able to retaliate with a Moonblast and should be in a range of actually taking him out. Even though he's fairly bulky, Dianchi has 160 special attacks, I knew that. I might not kill him, but it will be very close too with uh, the Toxic in mind. So he gets a very, very free opportunity to basically sweep him from here out. So now, obviously, I will hope that he's gonna go for another Dragon Pool C in my switch out. But he actually told me that he went for a store power. And the reason I say this is because I actually get a crit here, which is the second hacks in my favor. And, you know, I need every hacks I can get because obviously without Lando, I am a bit, bit in trouble. Won't deny that fact. So anyway, he's gonna bring Scylla. Obviously, Scylla is uh, his Palodic and is a very, very bulky mon. And I can't really hurt it. I just, I can't. So he's gonna go for a Skull. Obviously, that won't do anything. But, you know, 
he needs to hack soon, so the burn is gonna kick in, and obviously, though even though leftovers do help me out, the burn is just too much for me to keep up with, and uh, yeah, this is a third day turn ba battle, guys, and you can gonna see just why. So anyway, I'm predicting his switch out to Tangrove. Wow, we actually have his own lag there. Sorry about that. So we're gonna get the Toxic out of that. I really wanted the Toxic uh, Melodic though, but the Toxic Tangrove does not really mind too much about that though like I said due to the burn I'm getting some residual damage and uh, I could have predicted him here going for a sludge bomb but I decided that sludge bomb won't really do too much damage to Tangrove is not really that strong especially defensively or special attacking so I might as well go for a seed flare getting some damage and that of course going to actually tell me that of course he is assault vested or I was predicting that from the get-go but obviously that is confirming it. Now I get a bit too low on HP. While I could go for Synthesis, basically stall him out here due to he's actually not doing more damage and I actually can't recover, I still feel that that's gonna be a slow game and obviously I need to break through and I'm not gonna do that with uh, my Shaman. So I'm gonna bring Panzer, basically predicting him go for another Sludge Bomb. But he's actually gonna switch out and he's gonna switch out to the Conkleder. And this was bad. Like I said previously, due to me not having landers, I really had no options left, so I needed to go for a knockoff, basically take away the assault vest, and then after that, actually bring up Maul and they can't take it out. Uh, my Panzer is... well, it's not gonna help me this match, it just it isn't, and it was really frustrating getting to that conclusion that I'm gonna lose this Maul due to... Um, well, due to my play with landers, um, that obviously hurt me too much this game and this is just a confirmation of that so I'm gonna lose Draven right there and then and luckily I can bring Dianchi basically and go for Moonblast. Moonblast is a 1 hit KO now due to uh, well 160 base special attack you just you, you can't stop that but he's gonna bring Scylla yet again and I should definitely see that one coming now I really wanted to scout the special or the special damage I'll do here and that is confirming that this guy is special defensive there is no way I can break through uh, so I gotta go to Jeltis, and this might be a strange play guys, but the thing is, had I, I thought that bringing Shaman would be super predictable and that he would predict me and go for an Ice Beam, uh, but he goes for a Scold. So I was thinking that at least I would, this would force him out, um, since he can't really hurt me, but he gets the burn. And um, that's really bad because I'm actually a physically sweeperish oriented uh, Empoleon and it pretty much is useless now. And obviously, you know, I can't really stress this enough, I was so annoyed by this because every, like, response set I had was being wasted from the get-go. Like, every good response was just thrown away. And, um, obviously here, he can stall me out. I'm actually gonna split this thing up a bit. So, I will at least show him that I have the drill pack. And, you know, all residual damage really makes this game <laughs> kind of slow. Uh, drill pack does fair damage though, of course, had I not been burned, I would actually have killed it. And that is so unfortunate. Now the sugar berry will keep me alive, luckily. And he's actually gonna bring his Malotic here. Uh, which is not bad, it's not bad at all, but at the same time, I kinda realize that, alright, he's gonna stall me out with recover. And uh, I do believe that drill pack will bring him down to a low amount of HP, which is nice. But he has secrets, so uh, screw that. <laughs> so he's in a good position. Uh, so I will actually reserve um, Empoleon of later in case I screw up with uh, Alaka Sam later on. So I'm gonna bring Didemus and um, this is probably the worst play in the game. I can't believe I fell for this because I had on my notes that it's very likely that he has Mirror Coats. Uh, I still attacked him though I have Call Mind. So he went for Mirror Coat and yeah that's it. Like, I don't know what went through my head, but knowing that I did that play is gonna haunt me till the like, whole week. I was so annoyed by that throughout the whole night. Uh, because that was probably the worst play I made throughout this match. Because uh, Kazam would have pretty much swept from there. I could have, like, I would have been walled out by Sharpedo. But since I still have an Aqua Jet on my uh, um, Empoleon, that was actually not a big issue. At least not there and then. So anyway, I'm gonna go for Seeds Flare. I basically am forced here to attack him as much as I can. Now he'll go for a knockoff and of course we take that really well. We're still a Shaman after all. 
and I can keep go for attacking moves. Uh, I really need to do that. I need to force him down and let the Toxic take him out. That's the only way I'm going to be able to top or stop Tangro of this game. And um, yeah, his Sludge bomb, bomb does a fair amount of damage, but it's not enough. And he's going to fall to poison. So that's Tangro, by the way. Who knew we could actually kill that thing without the responses that I designed for it. Uh, so he's going to bring Kronk. And here's where I make another questionable play. Uh, I knew I was going to live the Mag Punch, but I did not go for Synthesis, and of course, I missed the Seas Flare, which should have been able to kill him. Uh, so I'm forced now to sack Yeltis, which means that, obviously, I have now a whole, whole lot of responses left. I think the only Pokemon I got left now is Dayenshi and, um, and Shaman, and like I said, Shaman is not in a good position right now. I basically need to save Shaman for... Um, well, for my logic, seeing if I even can hurt it at all, because I don't have that much special attack. So, Moonblast was enough to take out the Conk, I knew that. Uh, so he's gonna bring Scylla, and at this point I was thinking, I need to get a crit, I need to get something, high roll, anything, and take it out, but we are close, yes we are, but it is not enough, and it's still on my logic, and he did not retaliate with a mirror coat, he's gonna just go for recover, which means that I'm thinking that he's gonna mirror coat me to death and I'm just gonna get out of there, bring in Hanalith or um, my Shaman back again but he's just gonna keep recovering and due to me activating his competitive he's actually in a 2 hit KO area with the Melodic I was hoping he wasn't, so I went for Synthesis hoping to be able to recover enough but I am not, I simply am not guys and I'm forced to pre-HP which means I'm forced to attack and Seed Flare sadly will not do enough damage uh, it just it is not there but I do lower the special defense which means that Moonblast will be able next turn to take him out but he still has you know, the positions of switching that out and obviously that special defense drop was probably my opening if anything but he's gonna see right through that and obviously take an opportunity to switch out to his Heatran yeah he had a Heatran guys remember that the guys who got Malando yeah he's still alive very much so but luckily for me, he is not faster now, and he lost his Shuka Berry, which means that the nerve power should be just about plenty to take him out, if anything. So I was predicting here that, alright, he's gonna just finish the game 2-0 and bring the Melodic back in. But no, he's gonna bring the Om Nom Nom, which is Torpedo. And unlucky for him, uh, we decided this to, uh, of course, predict that... Um, <laughs> protect Speed Boost. And we're gonna go for Rock Polish, and we of course gonna outspeed him next turn, which means that Dayenshi actually get four kills this game. That is very, very impressive, honestly. But sadly, guys, this is last matchup, and we are not winning this game. We just we can't. Uh, now Moonless will put him in a where a next hit would kill him, but his skull would be just about plenty to kill me, and that crit did not matter. Uh, Eric won fair and square, and that's yeah, that's GG, guys. So right, some afterthoughts. I was really, really annoyed after this game. I was super frustrated, uh, not because I lost. Actually, that that was actually not it. The thing that made me so annoyed and frustrated, and I'm gonna sound a bit mean. I don't mean it like that, but uh, I overestimated my opponent. Um, I thought my Eric would go out of his way here to design a team to compensate for his low speed against mine, since I obviously outspeed a majority of his team. And I think that mindset of everything being scarfed and stuff like that had me play all kinds of weird. Uh, I lost Landers really early because I was so sure his heat was scarfed. Obviously it wasn't. Uh, I lost Alaka Sam out of a stress play, which probably was the worst part about this whole game. Because Call Mine Alaka Sam would have been a real nice late game sweeper. I did not go need to go for Psyshock. And it wouldn't matter if it went for Sharpedo because I could still tackle it in my own fashion. So I was super bummed about that and I don't mean to sound mean against Eric because he played a good game. I just think that it was my own like my own dumb thoughts that actually destroyed my team here. Uh, had I played a game uh, as I usually do with you know being just aggressive and very forceful, uh, I probably would have been able to cope with his team, but I was so sure he would tackle me in another way. And when he didn't do that, I didn't just didn't know what to do. And those plays I made was basically a way for him to break through my team, which he was not supposed to do. And that had me annoyed all night because um, I don't mind losing, but I hate lose 
when it's my fault. I lose to my own design flaws and my over predictions and it had me in a very bad spot from the get-go and it never let up. Now it turns out to be a one in my favor and I'm actually really glad over that. It's helpful but um, it still won't deny the fact that I played a bad game. I was all over the place and uh, I deserve to lose even bigger in this game because I just did not act as the way I am supposed to do in, in a game honestly. And uh, next game, I'll, I'll, I'll definitely um, reevaluate myself. And Eric, you know, good game, really. I I'm sorry for being so um, frustrated over this game. Like I said, I really hate when I am the reason I lose. <laughs> I'd rather be defeated by good plays than making bad plays and lose due to that. That that's just is that just brings the worst in me. Um, but no, no denial on that. You definitely had a great team against mine, and I fought. You really played a nice game through and through, and I'm sorry about the hacks, though it did turn out to be quite even in the end, which is real nice. That seed flare miss was a bit frustrating, I won't deny that. Uh, but anyway, I want to thank everybody for watching. Everybody's matches will be linked down below, guys. So if you want to see more TBU matches, make sure to check those guys out, and uh, you will see my next game next Friday against Gabriel or LA Gulax Rays, or whatever, awesome name. Um, so yeah, looking forward to that. He's at a really threatening team, and you'll see that team preview on Thursday. So thank you everybody for watching, and I'll see you next week. Until then, guys, take care. And remember, the sky's limit. I'll see you next time. Until then, take care.